but at the same time, they insisted that people, their staff, their remote staff, come back to the office. And the commentary was either by Bob Sutton or somebody else in the same sort of organizational workplace space. Uh -huh. And they says, guys, management, you are being stupid because if they're able to do their job at home and they have been doing it effectively, what real purpose is there? You're just basically trying to show who's boss, literally and figuratively. And apparently, and, and this is only the brief bit I read, it basically caused a max a mass exodus going great we quit we can find other jobs and i'm delighted by that response because it shows post covid people have more power to just say no thank you there are other jobs in the world and i really hope that sort of evolves the the treatment of employees mm -hmm. You know, if I'm a boss and I am somewhat, I would just say, I don't care how you get it done as long as it's up to standard and on time. Results only workplace environment is makes us both happy. Yeah. And to add to that, I think if there's a reason why they need to come back into the office, then you need to explain that. That's a part of the problem that I have is that you're just telling people what to do. But when you mm -hmm. don't explain the why, they make up their own narrative as to what should happen or why you are feeling like that. So mm -hmm. I've seen times and I've worked with clients that they have a valid reason for maybe wanting people back in the office for different reasons. Um, but when they don't explain that clearly, then it makes it as if, hey, I don't trust you. I don't know yeah. what you're doing at home. I need to micromanage. And that's the narrative that people make up because they they haven't explained the why. So it's up to leaders to always make sure that their employees understand the why and in a way that they actually hear it. So mm -hmm. you can't say, oh, well, I told them. Um, and one of the things that I say often is gone are the days of do as I say, not as I do. Could you describe a recent situation where you felt that your leadership team or the leadership team of your clients could have benefited from additional training or guidance in culture building, leadership, or both? Mm, that's a good one, Tim. And one of the reoccurring concerns, I'll say that, um, that I have is working with leaders that feel they have all the answers. So I had one leader to say, sometimes you just have to tell people what to do because they don't know. I tried asking them and I did exactly what you told me to do, Kathy, and that didn't work. And I said, okay, let's role play. Tell me what you said and what was the response. And we were trying to go through the grow model. Um, that's kind of how we were working through some things. And their response was, well, I told them that in order for your career to go from here to there, then this is what you need to do. And I said, what was the response? And he said, he said I don't know if I want to do that. I'm not sure if that's the best route. And the leader was really like frustrated with the employee or with their employee because they said, I've seen this happen over and over again and I'm trying to help them get from here to there quicker. And if they don't want my help, then don't waste my time. Right. That's and they okay. said, but I didn't yeah. say that. I didn't say that to them. I said, but the way you're saying it to me Maybe you didn't use those words, but that's exactly how it came across. Because your body language is triggering right now at the fact that you had that conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a shut up and get in line without saying shut up and get in line. Anyway, yeah. I'll get off my soapbox here. Um, next one. Go ahead. I totally agree with you. Just, just to let you know, I totally agree. 
is that you always have options. <laughs> yep, there's the high five. You always right. have options. And what I choose to do or what I tell people is the only thing you're doing is making yourself more miserable. As you said, there is a time where you have to say, okay, I need to take the next two weeks or the next month and find other employment. Mm -hmm. But at no time should you allow your values and ethics to be at risk. Right. Respect. Yeah. Okay. So the next one would be what specific outcomes would you hope to achieve through training in leadership and culture building? So a part of my moniker or title is perspective. Um, so inclusive leadership's perspective. Um, I love that word because it allows us to have different conversations. And I just want, my biggest outcome is when I can help someone to see a different perspective. I'm not trying to change your mind. I just want you to have a different perspective as to what leadership looks like, as to what someone else is thinking, as to what, um, how you should move forward in that workplace, in the workplace. And are you adding value to the culture or are you actually a hindrance to having a healthy culture right. in that work? I like that. So, okay. Yeah. No, so I, I'll just um, end with, again, it's really about the conversation for me. Um, because something else that I love to say is that we are all one conversation away from change. It may not be the first, it may not be the 200th, but if we keep talking about it, I believe that change is bound to happen. Change is going to happen. And it's not changing your mind, but just helping to validate, yes, I'm on the right path or, oh, okay, that's a different way for me to look at it. That's a different perspective. So I will shift a bit um, and evolve in my thinking. Right. I love that. I'm probably, I, I'm going to steal that or maybe quote that in some of the, some of my stuff. We are all one conversation away from change. And it is always the case that we are. And I also really enjoyed and appreciate what you said about, I'm not trying to change your mind. Oh, so, exactly. you know, everybody has their perspective and everybody has one life to live. So you have to live and die according to what your belief is. And it's not up to me to say, oh, well, you need to believe exactly what I believe or you need to do exactly what I do. Because frankly, temp what kind of world would that be? You know, I believe that that's manipulation. And I don't subscribe to that kind of thinking where I feel mm -hmm. like if you don't agree with me, then right. we can't friends or we can't continue to talk like right that basically what some people say I and we can keep talking about it um and I hope that you'll see a different perspective um from our conversations but it's not for me to convince you to do it my way every time we click on something I watched a fantastic TED talk I do not remember the the name of any of it but it basically mm -hmm. says when we click we vote for more of that. So if you're yes. opposed to it, you can validate your feelings and express your moral outrage, but you've also increased the chance that YouTube or whatever platform is going to show it again because it's like, oh, it got engagement. So if yes. you're really opposed to something, you're better to simply not click it because otherwise you're voting for more of it. Yeah. It's scary. And, you know, even with that, sometimes you just don't know. So there's some marketing genius out here that because of the title, you click because of the title um, that may seem like, oh, this is good. Right. Or this is something that may be helpful. And you realize after clicking it, whoa, I do not agree. I don't like this at all. This does not fit within my morals and values. But right. sometimes just don't know and so you're right you get into this web of especially as a researcher you know 
you're looking for things in a specific area. So you're going to click on most of the things that seem okay. Mm -hmm. It's easy when it seems sketchy. You're like, oh, I don't know about that. But for the right. most part, you're going to click on things to see, is this going to help my research? Is this going to help my cause um, or whatever I'm doing? And yeah. then, as you said, it's like, oh, she likes that. It's like, no, I don't like it. But who do you tell? Who do you tell that to? And it's like, oh, I clicked that by mistake. Right. Well, there is at least, <clears throat> excuse me, one action you can take click away immediately because remember the the algorithms are about watch time so if you go yeah. you know oh my god this is kkk or neo nazi or anything that is against your moral compass soon mm -hmm. as you realize that it is not what you want to vote for you click away so that drops the watch time the engagement and it still mm -hmm. sends a signal that is oh they clicked on it but they didn't like what they saw so right. that's the best you could do is just click away as soon as you can. It's like, oops. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's about the most you can do that will at least have an influence on the algorithm. So the next yeah. one is 